You should get commission from Zach McGowan for the amount Word that you up. actually, you actually If you get him. this dude, you taking me to the premiere, red carpet, <laughs> all that around the world, baby. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, this is not shocking. This is no news at all to us. This is more of confirmation of what we already thought this was going to be and unfortunately kevin feige is out on record saying that the marvels is going to be dope (laughs) so this is this is how far we've come we have news that the fantastic four cast has been finalized apparently brian the new X-Men has no Wolverine, Brian. I, I I wasn't sure what that meant, but you put it in the notes, so I'm interested in, in finding out what that means. Uh, and Dead, Deadpool likely delayed, which is unfortunate for a lot of Deadpool fans and Ryan Reynolds fans because this is something, because of what people have been saying in the news, all the cameos, all the people that are going to be in this. and Again, a show. And now it's being there's talk of it being delayed, Brian. What are your thoughts on the box office uh, 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 tracking for the Marvels? I mean, I, I can't wait for that weekend. Um, yeah, look, I mean, this is all over our podcast history. You could, we've been calling this all year that this was going to be a problem. Um, so the the first Captain Marvel movie for reference, $153 million US opening weekend en route to a global tally of $1.1 billion, which you and I will tell you is the definition of bubblicious because the movie (laughs) wasn't that great, but the genre was so hot and the momentum was so strong into Endgame that it carried that movie to an enormous number. So the movie's short, supposedly about 100 minutes. Uh, the budget's a little tighter. It's like a little south of $200 million, but the tracking <laughs> suggests an opening weekend between 50 and $75 million. So down from 153 for the first movie. Well, if you open at that level and assume the movie's average, which given the fall off in quantum media is not necessarily a lot, but if we assume it's average, Probably looking at a total global gross of maybe 250 yeah. to 300 on a budget of call it 175. You know, that's an, that's a loss probably approaching 75 to 100 million dollars for the studio. I mean, that's which is, I mean, that's kind of what we saw coming. We were kind of, I've been kind of circling this as like a hundred million dollar loss type movie. If it does fall off like Quantum Mania, you could be looking at box office of 200 million or less, in which case it's definitely a loss of more than 100. And either way, it means this will not be an event. It will come and go, and it will not provide any momentum or any recovery story for Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Or, I mean, I, I kind of wonder, like, if this movie does that poorly, and we know the state of flux for Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, what are the odds we get a recast of Carol Danvers before those movies? Like, would Brie Larson even want to be this part again? Why would the studio want her back if, if, if this movie is such a small splash? It's with not a lot on the calendar. Why not? Why wouldn't this be the end for that? I don't see her coming or being able to come back from this, or them wanting them to, re- or them wanting to redeem themselves from this. Right? For what? What's the purpose? If at the secret, I mean, I don't know what her contract is, but I would suspect that she'd probably want to do something. On um, what's that girl's name? Rose, Rose, that she bounced from the Batwoman oh, thing. Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose. She'll pull one of those and be like, "Yo, I'll... she just find a way to get out of it because it's just it... she saw the writing on the wall." And I and I would assume Brie Larson sees it well as well. And this would just be her confirmation, and she'll find a way to get out of it. I mean, she's on record. She literally has said on record. Do fans really want to see me play Captain Marvel? She said that into a microphone after the blowback she got after the first one. And the thing is, 
her fingerprints, as familiar with Fran here, her fingerprints are more on this movie. The director of this movie is the one that she greenlit. It's like, okay, mm. this is the Nia da Costa. This is the person I want making this movie, the, making the tonal shift in this movie toward buddy comedy, I guess, team up is what we're getting. And like you had Kevin Feige saying the first time he saw the Marvels together, it was like the Avengers in 2012, the first time they were all together. What? That quote is going to come back to haunt him when this movie disappears from the theater within a matter of weeks and nobody cares. And if, if the reviews for this are not incredibly strong, and I mean like incredibly strong, because like Blue Beetle reviews were decent. Nobody cared. Even Flash was technically fresh. Nobody cared. Like, unless the reviews for this are like 90% plus and people are like, everyone has it wrong. If you don't see this movie, you're missing out on the event of the year. This movie is going to fail spectacularly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I predict for this movie. Yeah. And I do too. Like, I'll go opening weekend, but like, I have no excitement and no buzz to, to it's not, nobody cares. Like, nobody, that's the thing is like, there's not a lot of big movies this fall. Um, in this area in the black but like i think people are much more excited for like you know killers of the flower moon is three and a half hours that's a big ask in the theater and i think people are much more excited to see that than they are to see you know spend an hour and a half watching this so one thing in this this book that we haven't had a chance to read in full uh, MCU, the, uh, the the Reign of Marvel Studios, there's a reference in there about Quantum Mania because the book's pretty recent. That apparently, Quantum Mania was the big wake up call to the studio. The reason being that internally they thought Quantum Mania was a classic. <sighs> They legitimately thought when they finished it and saw the finished cut, everybody is going to line up and love this movie. And then they got a $100 million opening weekend, and then the movie just tanked, and nobody liked it. And so that was, like, supposedly the first time, even though, you know, we had our issues with, like, Doc Strange 2 and some of the other films, that was the first time where, like, they completely misread the room. And so it kind of feels like with the Marvels is not as bad as that, but Feige's quote about likening it to the Avengers makes me wonder if they, again, like when they were making this and they saw the finished cut, were like, they think they've got a hit. And now once again, the box office tracking is saying, you're not even close to getting people back interested. And what, what, think about what we were saying, Brian. When it came to quantum mania, before we move on to the next uh, Marvel news topic, we said that this was huge, that this needed to be something huge, and we were we thought it was going to be something huge, and it turned out to be quite disappointing, unfortunately. And uh, they knew this had to be huge. They thought it was going to be huge, and they were wrong. And it, it could certainly be a, a, just a simple case of we feeling ourselves too much. And we throw a classic? Really, yo? This is not it. This is not it. Once again, Brian, hopefully this uh, this starts... What we hope is the the the, the next phase uh, or the next evolution of the MCU. I think that's what we can call this. Um, Fantastic Four, Brian. It has been reportedly said that it, it, it has been finalized, Brian. I would have to say, Brian, I honestly, why would I want the Fantastic Four if in fact it'll be a part of this MCU, does it make sense, Brian? I agree with you. I am more afraid. So Matt Shackman, the director, teased that the casting has been finalized. So assumingly we get was presumably we'll get the announcement soon. But I'm terrified because this movie can't fail. Mm -hmm. This is three strikes you're out yeah. for these characters. The the first this family. 
two and a half. There's a foul ball at first. <laughs> There's true. a foul that's ball fair. in there. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So I'm just so terrified that like, and all the news we and all the rumors we've heard like haven't really excited me about like Galactus and Silver Surfer already being in this movie. And now we get a casting announcement and you look at the calendar and you're like, okay, so if the Marvels is going to bomb this way, so there's no box office momentum at all. And then you look ahead and you're like, okay, Deadpool might get delayed, but Deadpool probably going to be good, good for making some good dollars. But then like, you know, new world of uh, Captain America. It's not even, it's not even new. Is it new world order now? I forget. Like no, I mean, they, they, changed they changed it. it. They changed it. Right. Yeah, so that, yeah. that's not going to, that's not going to, to me, going to get people excited. Thunderbolt's not going to get people excited. So, like, releasing a new Fantastic Four iteration into a cold, likely ice cold Marvel box office run is high risk that that Super. thing disappoints and we never hear from those characters for a long, long, long not time. Not in this generation, yeah. I don't want to see them apart. Them doing Galactus and Silver Surfer again in the MCU with Fantastic Four is similar to them doing Superman Returns. You're giving me the same story, but you're redoing it. And what are we supposed to, how different is it going to be? Yeah, we're going to see Galactus, the humanoid, the real Galactus, not no damn cloud. Hooray. That's not what I'm there for, really. It'll be cool, but it's not what I'm there for. I'm looking for that respect Galactus gives Reed Richards. I'm looking for that. He's neither good or evil. I want to see that aspect. I don't want, oh, big bag Galactus is coming and we got to stop him. And yeah, it's not a Godzilla. Not a Godzilla. Yeah. And we love Godzilla. That's a different show. But like, yeah. yeah. That, but, but I, I can't. Oh, yeah. I, you can't give that to me, man, because it, at that point it is over. I think whatever ideas that have been conjured up, all ideas that are on that list that are on that current list, take that list and burn it. I agree. I agree. Because I, they shouldn't yeah. see the light of day. And I think, look, I mean, I, we just saw we just saw the risk of this with the Suicide Squad, right? And like. And and the, and the first one of those was far more successful than any Fantastic Four movie has been. But the the muscle memory for audiences was that they just didn't care when James and and that, again that movie is over ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Critics loved what James Gunn did. Audiences yeah. did not care. And I still think, you know, that two thousand fifteen Fantastic Four movie they still put that on in syndication on FX and all. It's on TV like pretty regularly. They still run it. And I'm like. If you put out a substandard Fantastic Four now, people are going to be like, wait, didn't we just do this a couple years ago? Didn't I just see this stink a couple years ago? And we're doing yeah. another average one? Why? Like, it's just too risky. And you saw, like, with, you know, James Gunn got a hold of, the, you know, the DC kind of game plan. And what is the what is the one thing he did not attempt to resurrect? The Suicide Squad. And somebody asked him about it. He's like, no. Like, no way. He's like, the audience has spoken. Like, it's dead. Like, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worried, worried, Pablo, and worried that like when we see this announcement, we're just, we're gonna go pick pick some nits about who how, how what they came up with for casting, and then be like, why not? And just you're right. The that? fact that they keep playing these, these 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 Fantastic Four movies, and it's just and it's just for them to get audience attention for the their, their channels. It's not because these movies are great or anything <laughs> like that. It's for kids who are there watching and those superhero fans to get eyes that's it but the it, as long as those things are out there them announcing a fantastic four that that, that we can't not move on really it's hard especially after seeing one piece you know and and it's like what what will be the differentiator for me other than the family dynamics cool for us that's that's something that we want brian yeah, but for others who are looking for the powers and the what different aspect or perspective yeah. are, gonna, are they going to look at that's going to make them say, "Wow, that's so different." Yeah, it's, it's it's a tough it's a tough task, but let's let's see. I, I still say go to Zen La, start from there. Um, new 
X-Men has no Wolverine, Brian. I have not seen any news items regarding that. But you uh, mentioned it in our notes. What has gone on with the X-Men and this notion that there is no Wolverine? So this kind of ties to the Deadpool situation. So Hugh Jackman, right? So you got Hugh Jackman coming back for Deadpool 3. You reportedly have Hugh Jackman playing a major role in Secret Wars as it's currently constituted. And so then this related report that I saw um, suggested that Marvel's formulation of its new X-Men that they are supposedly getting closer to to moving forward with will not include Logan. With the reason being, it's too close to Jackman still being in the part. They don't want to have a new younger iteration kind of when he's still a, got his fingerprints on what they're doing. So they're going with an X-Men lineup that does not have the Wolverine in it. Even though the profile, obviously, of the character is pretty high and like would be one of the big draws of any X-Men lineup. And is key, as we know, to several of the relationships within the team. Gene, Scott, the professor, so forth. That would certainly be a bold choice, but ah, that that one seems pretty risky. It's certainly risky, but I get it, Brian. But it's a Hugh Jackman problem. That's an that's what really what they're admitting. They have a, they wanted Hugh back for the money. They're gonna get that, but now they got to deal with the problem, which is by bringing him back, everyone still sees him as Wolverine, and they can't move forward. If it were me, you know me. I already got my my Wolverine. I put him out there and I put him <laughs> up against you, Jackman, any day of the week. <laughs> You should get commission from Zach McGowan for the amount Word that you up. actually, you actually up. If you get him. this dude, you taking me to the premiere, red carpet, <laughs> all that around the world, baby. <laughs> uh, I get it because, listen, we can't have the focus simply on Wolverine. Wolverine certainly is a high profile character and he overshadows when he's in the room especially if you got a good Wolverine when he's in the room you gotta you wanna know what Wolverine is doing or what he's thinking or what he's saying mm -hmm. so I get if you wanna start off with that uh, plan I, I, I understand the reasoning behind it <clears throat> this is where it gets interesting Scott, you gotta he gotta be up there with Captain America type sort of like that 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 leader, you know? That's Cap. Not that's um uh that's Cyclops. Yes, that's yeah. Cy that's Scott Summers. I get it, he's in love with Gene. I don't need to see him in love with Gene 24-7. You know what I'm saying? I want to see the leader. I want to see the guy that sees Professor X's vision and follows it to, uh, to heart, right? A follower of, of, of Professor X. I want to see that dynamic. Uh, and again, it's not only Cyclops, there's other characters as well that have to sort of make an impression and remind us of those characters that we know in the comics and in the animation. Uh, uh, shows. If they don't do that, Brian, I think we get a similar, I get anyway, a similar feeling back to the Fox X-Men stories uh, that the character, we saw the characters, but we didn't really, I didn't really get attached to any of them other than perhaps Hugh Jackson, Hugh, uh, uh, um, uh, Wolverine, and uh, Nightcrawler was pretty dope. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and and of course, Professor X. Uh, th yeah, those are my thoughts on on that. Yeah, you know the, the other the other thing I kind of feel like with with going that route is we already did it. I mean, First Class has no Wolverine, like, it, and it was a good movie. They yeah. they tried it, they did it, no Wolverine, and then guess who guess who they needed for Future's Past, which was the, 
which is an excellent movie. But guess what they wound up doing? It's, they're like, hey, Hugh, we need you. Like, so I think they're kind of caught here a little bit. But this also goes to every, when everything is related in a good way, everything's related in a bad way, right? Because why do they need why do they need Hugh Jackman for Secret Wars? Well, we know why. Because their Avengers lineup sucks. If he was only doing this like isolated, contained swan song adventure with Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool 3, I don't think they have this problem. But because they need him to save the day in their big soft reboot capstone to this multiversal saga, now they're stuck being like, hey, we he's too big of a shadow. We need to kind of build our X team away from him. Like, again, it just feels like one problem leads to another challenge. And now you're like, is this, you know, I just worry that like when they announce this lineup, people will, a lot of casual fans will look at it and go, where will we at? <laughs> like, is he, is he one of, is he one of you? And that's, that's, that's the risk. So we'll see. But I mean, and again, Deadpool getting delayed. Deadpool getting delayed is just because of the strike. I mean, the actor strike is still ongoing. The writer strike is resolved. And Sean Levy just admitted, he's like, you know, we mostly shot the movie, but it's not totally done. And mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of, enough time for post-production to get this thing ready for the May. Remember, they moved it up. They moved it up a couple of months. So it's supposed to be in May next year. And he's kind of saying, like, that's getting very difficult to pull off. So it seems like maybe end of this, seems like headed for maybe fall or holidays 2024 for Deadpool 3. Again, it's... it's, it's, it's... It's a long way for something that we thought we were getting much sooner. Um, especially with all the news, them being in the news. There really hasn't been, you know, the sort of uh, advertisement that we're sort of used to when it comes to Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds hasn't really gone on a full end with the marketing plan. Uh, um, so there's going to be some time for that. There's going to be a delay for that. Hopefully the momentum for the MCU is still not going down <laughs> and, and, and is on a more upward trajectory uh, than it is now. So how? What how? Was that? I mean, I'm just saying, but how will that be possible? I'm just saying, if we look at the 2020, we look at the calendar, we just talked about the Marvels being a, a box office disaster. 2024, oh, it's Brave New World is Captain America 4 now. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, do you really think what do you really think that's going to be? We're interested in that movie, but do you really think that's going to be a big hit with the way things are going? I don't see that. I mean, in best case, I feel like it's like a a decent uh, film. I hope for. I but. think I, it, it, it falls down to some of the things that you said prior to um, this show with how Brian Reynolds is able to really promote the movies and get people excited for something. Uh, and I think that it's surely going to be entertaining, especially with Hugh Jackman. It's going to be a show. It's going to be an event, Brian, I'm not for entertainment worried. purposes. I'm not worried about Deadpool 3 making money. I'm just saying from an MCU momentum perspective, I don't see how Thunderbolts and Brave New World following what looks to be a Marvel's bomb after so, okay. Quantumanium. But I just don't see where we're getting the like inflection point before Deadpool. Because that's really what the calendar is. Like we, Yeah, the, 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 I think I would call whatever movie comes out before Deadpool the bottom. And that'll and Deadpool will be the bounce. <laughs> the bounce, yeah. But, it, <laughs> but like is Deadpool 3, I mean to me like Deadpool 3 looks more like Guardians 3 than it does the actual inflection. Right, like Guardians 3 did quite fine at the box office and was people remembering some of the good things they liked about Marvel. To me, Deadpool 3 will be people remembering the things they liked about Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool and liked about Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. And then we're going to stuff a whole bunch of cameos in there to make that opening weekend bigger. I'm not saying the movie's going to be great. I'm just saying mm -hmm. box office wise, it will be this return to form that then immediately will fall back off if the next movie, whether it's Fantastic Four or whatever it is, isn't any better. I guess the only thing that it will provide some recovery of all the money that they've lost. I mean, maybe. Yeah, well, that's true. They'll make money on it. I guess I'm not worried about that. But like, mm -hmm. if I look at DC, like I actually think like DC once they clear, well, once they clear the the Aquaman disaster that's about to unfold, at least they basically have like a full, almost a full year. And I actually think they're going to have an opportunity for some momentum because Joker two 
will come out supposedly near the end of 2024. It's like a full year with no DC. And then you get Joker 2, which is going to make money. Whether we like it or not, that's going to make money. Then you get Superman Legacy. Then you get Batman Part 2. It's like, I'd much rather have that. <laughs> I'd much rather have that one, two, three coming up than what Marvel has. Even if it has Deadpool 3 in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Deadpool movie being delayed. Uh, what the X-Men looks like without Wolverine. We saw it attempted once. And and one thing about that movie, Brian, uh, X-Men First Class is Darwin dying. But, <laughs> you know, the guy that can't die, died. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of them taking our leaders. <laughs> it's crazy. You won't read man. into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, let us know what you guys think of the Marvels and the box office. Is, is this movie you're going to be spending your money to go see? Despite what reviews will, will possibly be. Uh, and we don't expect it to be that, 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 that uh, good. But uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below uh, what you and, and let us know what you guys think and hit that like and subscribe button, please. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Jerry Report. The show goes on. Yeah!